um, the difference between hip hop now and hip hop in the 80s was in the 80s, people were in it for great passion, no expectation of economic riches. We party together, our competition party together. We were a fraternity of people that had a deep love affair for what we did at the time. The fact of the matter is, is that um, um, what's changed now is that there's a less fraternal order. We don't like, we don't root for each one another. There's no association of people wanting to see others do well in this space. I said, y'all underground people, man, everybody trying to get to the top. I said, you know, you don't think that industry niggas working with each other at the top? We got to work with each other at the bottom to get to the top. So don't be bored all about it. Say, you know what? Don't even worry about it. When I say fuck the industry, when I say fuck the industry, it's because the industry is fucking up the real music, the real nigga music up in here. Everybody pockets in here drain for gas and everything. Listen, how is it possible that we could be high, have no money, zero clout, no organizational skills and no um, um, experience can end up making such a living and build something. It's only because of the pure arrogance of the major labels at the time that allowed us to incubate and artists develop ourselves. We went through a period of incubation um, because of the arrogance of all the major labels at the time. Perspective. I think I did a damn good job because the motherfuckers was shitting in their goddamn shorts sitting up there. Punk yeah. ass niggas. They were. You know what I'm saying? I should have threw that mic at their ass. And what? He was scared. He was scared to touch him. He was scared. But I was. Because he was like, he, like, he was going to grab the fucking mic from me. I said, let me show these niggas I got talent for you. Try to sandman me off this fucking stage. And then if he had done that, then it would have really been. It would have really been bad, man. First thing I mean is learn to be humble. Yeah. Until you really pushed it in, but that nigga put his hands on him, he pushed it in. They were already fucking us around. <laughs> and like, we tried to go down and hit them niggas and see what happened. Yeah, that right. shit set up from the beginning. They, they doing, did. They doing shit white folks do. They doing shit white folks That's do. That's what I was saying before. They said they had all this semen fucked up, you know, ass by the white man that you acting like you said. Y'all got fucked by so much, you think you one of them. That's how bitch. And I was gonna talk about industry, nigga. He look like his feelings was hurt. It's your feelings should be hurt. Your feelings I, I didn't hurt. say your name. You right. might not have been the nigga who out there doing the shit. I just said industry niggas, and you feelings got hurt. The house Negro, if the master said we got a good house here, the house Negro said, yeah, we got a good house here. Whenever the master said we, he said we. That's how you can tell a house Negro. If the master's, if the master's house caught on fire. The house Negro would fight harder to put the blaze out than the master would. If the master got sick, the house Negro would say, what's the matter, boss? We sick. We sick. You know this. You know I'm not lying. Oh my God, they got the fear. What? Why don't they understand that what this is is inevitable, nigga? This is an inevitable force. That's why I don't ever be mad. Because you can't stop us from making it. You ain't gonna be able to stop the movement. You ain't gonna be able to stop it. When that shit take place, and God say, green light, all y'all niggas die. They said, do what we tell y'all to do. Rap like we tell y'all to rap, or you not get inside. That's all it is. Then on top of that, you want to insult me by putting a 360 deal together. That's some fucked up shit. That's a pimp. That's how pimp sound. Y'all think y'all gonna make all this money without me and not cut me in? Fuck y'all niggas, 360! 360 deal! <laughs> <laughs> Give me everything you got! They slick, they ain't slick. I ain't slick. slick. They finna get killed. That's what they finna get. You finna fuck around with a bunch of niggas that's just at their ends rope, man. So fuck the industry. You ain't even a fuck my life. Fuck the industry instead. That's how that's how it's gonna go. When I say fuck the industry, that's my new style. Jesus, nigga. Got the Jesus style. Telling the truth on this shit. So fuck y'all nigga. Y'all niggas gonna have to beg, y'all have y'all gonna have to come through. And y'all gonna have to pay attention to these real niggas in a minute. That's why I say you better pay attention to the pen or the sword. Whichever one y'all want. Shotgun in your ass or, or a wonderful song. Which one do you want? A beautiful song or bullet in your ass. Which one you want? Like this. <laughs> I always say the fuck I gotta say cause life is short and you ain't no and the worst thing you have is regrets. And I don't got no regrets. Never. So I like to say this. <laughs> and hurry up so this the same the shit they did doing uh doing when Hitler's reign. 
with the third ray. You know what I'm saying? He only put out artists and musicians and stuff that he liked who were either German or played the type of music that empowered Germans. Right. It was thousands and countless of Jewish artists and Jewish composers who never got their music played and it was why you have great. Hollywood now. They were great and they never got their music played. The Jews created Hollywood. That's why you got Hollywood now. They created their own shit and did their own thing. Now who can stop them? They telling other motherfuckers what to do. If you ain't got a big Jew nose, you can't make millions of dollars. <laughs> fuck y'all. Alright, time to go. And on that note, we out. And I'm still saying fuck the industry. If you don't like it, come kill me. You stabbed me in the back, Johnny. But I'm bleeding too. <laughs> <laughs> yay, yay. <laughs>